Hi, I'm Paris, and I'm over halfway through my proton therapy radiation treatment for prostate cancer. Halfway through means I've finished my first month and I'm going into my second month. And I wanted to tell you what an average day is like receiving proton therapy treatment. Now, it only takes about 40 minutes out of your day, but you do have to prepare for it. Part of the preparation is what you don't do, and that is to eat foods that can cause gas. They don't like it when you go in there with gas. Probably most places don't, but it's especially bad with this because having gas down there near the end can move things around and move things out of position. When they do the initial scans, they're very careful to make sure you don't have any gas. And so they, they design the whole treatment for your prostate to be in this particular position. And if you've got gas bubbles pushing things around, it throws all that off. My advice is follow the recommendations about staying away from gas producing foods and drinks, because if you go in there with gas, they're gonna go and take it out. So eat what you want for the day after your appointment, but beforehand you do have to watch it. Also the drinks, you don't wanna have carbonated drinks, more gas. You also don't wanna have caffeinated drinks, at least for a few hours beforehand, because it acts as a diuretic and it's going to make you feel more like you need to pee. And what I'm going to tell you next is what's already going to make you feel like you really need to pee. So, and that is half hour before the appointment, you need to get started on this. 24 ounces of water. Half hour before your appointment time, you start drinking this and you need to finish the 24 ounces by 15 minutes before your appointment time. So you got 15 minutes to put this away. And then that's usually, since I'm staying relatively close to the uh, Proton Therapy Center, that's about the time I leave and drive over there. And when I get there, everything's fine. And so long as my appointment starts on time and they don't make me wait too long before bringing me back for the treatment, things are okay. But when there's a delay, then the problems begin. That 24 ounces is working its way through your system at the same rate, whether you're able to let any of it out or not. And they will tell you, don't let any of it out. They wanna have your bladder mostly full. The reason for that is it holds your prostate in a good position away from other important things down there. And so the protons can zap the prostate without zapping anything too important that's prostate adjacent. So with my mostly full bladder, I arrived there. Since it's COVID times, they had me fill out the little questionnaire. They take my temperature, put on a sticker showing that I've been scanned for the day. And then I grab my badge and scan myself in. That lets the technicians in back know that I am now in the waiting room and ready. This has got everything I need for my visit. I've got my barcode. I've got my amount of CCs that my bladder should be filled to. They're gonna check this when I go back to have them check how full my bladder is before the treatment starts. They look at that and it's got my schedule card which has my times. They're different every day for when I have my treatment. There are usually about half a dozen people in the waiting room and the chairs are separated for social distancing. Mostly older people. Well, it's gonna be people with cancer, but sadly you do see some young people there. Usually it's a five or 10 minute wait before someone will come out to bring me back to start checking the bladder. If it goes much longer than that, then we're like 20 or 30 minutes, which happens on occasion because the schedule gets messed up, technical things happen, but I have been half an hour or more. And at that point, even though you're supposed to wait because what will happen, they take you back and you uh, go to a little room where they put you on a table and they use an ultrasound wand on the bladder to see how full it is and they check my numbers on here and if I'm in this range, then it's good. If it's too much, then, then you can be happy because they give you a little plastic cup and they mark on it a, a line that you're supposed to fill it up to so you can relieve some of that pressure and that's always nice when that happens but when it's going on half an hour before I'm going back, I gotta make a command decision about relieving some of that pressure myself. And it's hard because I don't bring my own cup to look at how many cc's, I sort of have to do it by how many seconds worth and estimate how full my bladder is still feeling. Now, occasionally I'll go into the waiting room and there'll be a man pacing back and forth. And I know, yeah, his appointment's been delayed and he's doing his best to hang on. One person I saw was pacing and still nobody came out to get anyone and then they sort of, irritatedly went to the back and they went to the restroom. And a couple of minutes later, they came out. Just as they came out, the technician came calling their name to get them. So they went with the technician to the back. And then two minutes later, they came back out with a bottle of water to sit in the waiting room, drink that water, fill their bladder back up. I admit to being thrown in the penalty box once myself, 
but I've got a pretty good handle on it now. One of the things that happens over the first few weeks that makes it difficult is the treatment will irritate the urethra. You, the urethra runs right through the center of the prostate. So however precise they are at targeting the prostate and not surrounding things, that's right in the middle. So there's really no way they can avoid zapping that. Now, you zap it once, I didn't notice anything after the first day, but you zap it day after day and it gets irritated. And when it gets irritated, it spasms. And that's not a good feeling. And I found with its increasing propensity to spasm, it makes for a feeling of urgency. Even when you just have to pee a little, it feels like you need to go a lot and you need to go right now. So at the end of some of my treatments, I have flown down the hallway trying to hold it together and get to the restroom so I could empty my bladder. But again, I think I've gotten a little better at balancing out supply and demand. So once they take you back, check your bladder, assuming it's good, or if you have to, you, fortunately you get to drain off a little extra, they take you over to a changing room right outside of the treatment room. And you, just from the waist down, have to undress. I've been able to keep my shirt on and my socks, actually, and my uh, Fitbit. They just want, for the prostate, they want the hip area to be clear because they're gonna send the protons in from one side and then the other. So once I've undressed waist down, I put on a ho typical hospital gown, the kind that goes closes in the back and you tie it around your neck. Then you wait wearing your gown and holding on to this because they're gonna scan this barcode. They do that to double check and make sure that you're the right person receiving the right treatment. In the treatment room, you have to get up. So they have these like little, a miniature version of the steps that they roll up to airplanes so people can get off the airplanes. They roll one of those up, they step up that, lie down um, at the facility I'm at. They have these foam, a foam section down where your legs go and your legs slide down into the grooves in the foam and it holds them in a particular place. Now they have markings on me so they can get you in roughly the right position to start with. They've made marks on my hips, the sides of my knees, and my navel. And it's just a, a marker and they put a sticker, a clear sticker over it. So when you lie down and they get the table into position, they put the lights down and these uh, laser finder lines, red lines, come down across you and they line you up so that the lines for the legs, the lines for the hips, the line for the navel, you're all lined up correctly because they're trying to duplicate the exact position you were in when they designed your treatment plan so your prostate will be in the exact right position. Occasionally, I have gotten in the perfect position from the first time, but often they look at it, all right, scooch down a little bit down towards the feet or scooch up a little bit towards the head or lift your hips up and put them back to anyway there's different things to try to get your body in that exact position again once they see that then they leave the room and a scanning device slides out pretty sure it's a digital x-ray machine so they're taking the x-ray so now that you're in roughly the right position they want to look at those three little grain of sand size markers that were planted in the prostate make sure they're lined up. Sometimes after the x-ray scan, they move the table. Uh, usually it's at an angle. So uh, sometimes I've almost felt like I might start sliding, but it zzzzed. And then they go again, and usually then there's another x-ray. And then when they say, okay, we're ready, then the x-ray machine slides out of the way. And then it's time for the protons to be delivered. Now, of course, they stay way far away on the other side of a very thick wall when that's happening. And my experience has been, because what have you got to do? You're lying there on your back, looking up at the ceiling, listening. There's first a doorbell sound. That's an indicator for them to, that everyone needs to be out of the room because the proton delivery is going to start. It's like a ding dong. Okay, and occasionally you hear someone running away. <laughs> and then what I hear is it sounds like someone dialing a safe, like the tumblers on a safe. And then there's a pop. The sound of uh, exhaling. This is the sound the machine makes. Once that's happened, sometimes right away, sometimes a few seconds later, the protons start coming through. And I wondered why sometimes it's like a 30 seconds, I'm lying, I'm not hearing the protons coming through because there's a sound for that, I'll tell you in a second. But I, it was explained to me that they've got three treatment rooms all being fed protons by the one cyclotron. So someone else is in the middle of receiving their protons, you gotta wait till they receive theirs. Now when the protons are being delivered, there's sort of a grinding sound that comes from the machine. It's And I haven't counted how many times it does it, but it's pretty consistent in it starts out with a longer series of grinds. And then after 30 seconds or so, they start to get a little shorter. And then by about a minute or so, they're fairly short. 
and then there's another breath and then you know it's done and then you'll hear the footsteps of the person coming back around the corner and they say all right well we're half done because they now need to put the protons in from the other side depending on which place you're having this done you may have the machine rotate around you or they may take you and rotate you so now you've got the your hip against the proton emitter in the machine there's the x-ray maybe you're in the right position maybe you've got to adjust usually by the second one don't have to adjust anymore the x-ray machine goes back the doorbell rings ding dong and then the person scurries away and you're waiting and listening and you hear the tumbler of the safe and then the breath of air and then the grinding and it gets shorter towards the end and you come to know that real well because by the second half of this you've been on the table for 10 maybe 15 minutes and the worst oh is when they they incline the table not only a little to the side but up so you're like this and you've got to pee but they give you a little uh, ring for your hands to hold on to so your hands can do something and you don't i guess absent-mindedly put them down by your side because now that's going to be where the proton beam's coming in you don't want that so they give you a little ring to hold on to and when you've really got to go you're working the ring <laughs> so the grinding winds down and then there's the breath of air and whew, somebody's coming to relieve me so I can relieve myself. So they come around, they roll the little uh, airport stairs up on the way out. They've got the, the card with the next day's time. That was hard for me at first because having the least seniority, I got stuck with the worst times, the 5.30 in the afternoon times. They ask you to pick a two hour block when you'd like to receive your treatment. And mine, I picked uh, noon to 2 p.m. And it was 5.30. But they've finally, that now I am have enough seniority and there are enough newer people in the process that they get the crummy time. So now I usually get the times that I like. So that's a day in the life of receiving proton therapy for prostate cancer. I'll discuss some of the wider scale issues involved once you've had weeks of the proton therapy, including the side effects. And yes, there are some more, maybe milder than regular radiation, but at least in my case, I did not escape the side effects. I'll tell you all about those in a future video, and I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices, and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home, receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.